Our topic for today is about the chemical properties of fats and oils or the reactions of triacyl glycerols. We are going to talk about five reactions and we will start with hydrolysis. So when we say hydrolysis, it is simply the reverse of the esterification reaction by which triacyl glycerols are formed, just as carbohydrates. So this one is an example of a hydrolysis reaction. In hydrolysis, what we need is the presence of water, which will be catalyzed by an acid or an enzyme. So what happens here is that we have here our triacyl glycerol with three fatty acids. And then, because of heat and the addition of water with the help of the acid, it will be broken down to its components, which is glycerol and the three fatty acids. So here, it was broken down into glycerol and then palmitic acid, oleic acid, and linoleic acid. Hydrolysis takes place depending on the environment. So we have hydrolysis under acidic conditions, under basic conditions, and within the human body. So under acidic conditions, the products are glycerol and fatty acids. Under basic conditions, which is saponification, which is actually a separate reaction that we will encounter later, the products are glycerol and fatty acid salts. And then within the human body, it takes place during digestion with the aid of enzymes, like for example, the lipases. Hydrolysis can be divided into two. It can either be a complete hydrolysis or a partial hydrolysis. In the previous slide, what we have seen is actually a complete hydrolysis because all the three fatty acids were removed. While in partial hydrolysis, one or more of the fatty acid residues remain attached to the glycerol. So these two on the right part of the screen are examples of a complete hydrolysis and partial hydrolysis. So here is another example of a hydrolysis reaction, um, another complete hydrolysis. So water adds up to the ester bonds causing a bond breaking or the breakage of the ester linkage which leads to the production of glycerol in three palmitic acid molecules. Our next reaction is saponification reaction. So we know that saponification reaction is also a hydrolysis reaction but in a basic condition. So this is breaking of the ester bond of a glyceride or glycerol by the addition of a water molecule in the presence of a strong base. So here we have an ester which is actually our glycerol or glyceride connected to three fatty acid molecules and then it will be reacted with a strong base and what will happen is that the products that will be produced is a salt and a glycerol in case of the triacyl glycerol molecule. So saponification is also described as the process of soap making. So a soap is a salt of fatty acid often used as a cleaning agent. In saponification, when a fat or an oil is heated with a strong base, like for example here our strong base is sodium hydroxide, it gives off glycerol and sodium salts or what we call soap. When sodium hydroxide is used, a solid soap is produced that can be molded into a desired shape, like the usual soap that we use when taking a bath or when washing our hands, the solid soaps. While potassium hydroxide, another strong base, produces a softer or a liquid soap. So the salts obtained from saponification will actually depend on the type of base that you are going to use. So sodium salts, these are known as hard salts, 
and are found in most cake soap used in the home, which is produced by the use of sodium hydroxide. While potassium salts, which are known as soft soaps, are used in shaving creams and liquid soap preparations. So oils that are polyunsaturated actually produce softer soap. So the names like coconut or avocado shampoo will tell us the sources of the oil that is used in the saponification reaction. Here is another example of a saponification reaction. And here we can see that the salts produced are sodium palmitate, sodium oleate, and sodium linoleate, which are our sodium salts. Traditional soap making actually uses animal fat source of triacylglycerols and lye or crude sodium hydroxide or an extract of wood ashes as a source of its base. So in saponification, the end product is soap. And when we talk about soap, we will hear or encounter the term micelle, which is described as a spherical cluster of molecules in which the polar portions of the molecules are on the surface and the nonpolar portions are located in the interior. So here, we have a soap molecule, which is actually our fatty acid salt. And we know that fatty acids has its hydrophilic head, which is attracted to water molecules. So that is why it leans toward the water molecule. And the hydrophobic tail, which is water-fearing and non-polar, so it will be attracted to oil and dirt. So always remember the phrase, like dissolves, like. Okay, and because of that, it produces this spherical cluster which enables the cleaning property of soap. Next reaction, we have the hydrogenation reaction. So in hydrogenation reaction, uh, the reaction is at the double bond, so it is simply an addition reaction. And here, the degree of saturation increases upon the addition of hydrogen and which also increases the melting point of the corresponding fat or oil. So here we have an example of a linoleic acid and if enough hydrogens will be added in the presence of a catalyst, both of this double bond will be converted into a single bond. So it will be converted into steric acid, which is a saturated fatty acid. We also have what we call partial hydrogenation. So in partial hydrogenation, some, but not all of the double bonds present, will be converted into single bonds. So we know that for unsaturated fatty acids, its physical property is that it is commonly liquid. But because of partial hydrogenation, this liquids, liquid fats or uh, what is commonly being partially hydrogenated are vegetable oils will be converted into semi-solid materials. So in this partial hydrogenation reaction, you will notice that the third fatty acid, which has a double bond, is converted into a single bond. So not both of these two fatty acids containing the double bond will be completely hydrogenated. Hydrogenation of vegetable oils produces a mixture of cis and trans fatty acids. Hydrogenation is actually used in the food industry to convert polyunsaturated vegetable oils into saturated oils. Like for example, the production of peanut butter, it is through partial hydrogenation. The solid cooking shortenings and stick margarines are also products of partial hydrogenation. In partial hydrogenation, the addition of hydrogen must be controlled and must be stopped before all of the double bonds in the liquid oil or fat become completely saturated. Complete hydrogenation is prevented because it gives a very brittle product while partial hydrogenation changes it into a soft, semi-solid material. And our last 
reaction would be oxidation reaction. So, oxidation reaction is the carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond in the fatty acid residues of triacylglycerol reacting with molecular oxygen from air. So, here, the unsaturated fatty acids is being oxidized and being converted into short-chain aldehydes. And then, it will be further oxidized to produce short-chain carboxylic acids. This is a reaction map of triacylglycerols. So, when triacylglycerols are reacted with water in acid, the expected product are glycerol and fatty acids. If we have a more saturated triacylglycerol, um, it is produced from the reaction between a triglyceride and hydrogen or the addition of hydrogen. Now, when triacylglycerol undergoes saponification reaction, it is converted into glycerol plus if fatty acid salts. And in addition to this, when your triacylglycerol is oxidized or undergoes oxidation reaction, the product will be carboxylic acids and short-chain aldehydes. So these are the reactions of triacylglycerols.